Hey everybody, what's going on? What's going on today? Hopefully you guys are having an amazing, amazing day today. Today is the first of the month. You know, if you are following me, please do not forget to blow your cinnamon. Uh, I did a cinnamon spell ritual. This is for prosperity, blow your cinnamon. A lot of different practitioners tell you to blow cinnamon every first of the month. And this is just a ritual to um, allow you to bring in wealth and bring in prosperity into your home and keep it into your home. I did a video on how to do this. It's linked somewhere. <laughs> I, I got a lot of videos, but just search for cinnamon prosperity ritual and you will see how to blow your cinnamon. All right. Excuse me, y'all. So today it's raining. It's 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 just one of them days. I'm home. I'm off today. Um, I had a uh, maintenance man had to come over today, so I'm just chilling. I hate doors. This open. I'm just chilling today, doing a couple of videos. Um, if you order anything from my site, I will be um, sending things out today. Well, getting them ready today to send out on tomorrow, okay? Usually on Fridays, I don't ship anything because it just sits at the post office. So, and we know Monday is a holiday. So, I'll get them to the post office. I'll just take my time because it's just going to sit there. And But I will get them tagged and bagged and ready to go for Tuesday morning, okay? If you order anything. Today, I am talking about different goddesses i am so on to the petitioning goddesses for help requests for help requests for um just the things that's going on in the world today with women's rights i'm focused on that i just recently lit my protection candle i'm just in my spirit room um, I cleaned up already. My correlation candle ritual that I did had is just done. So I'm going to burn the effects of that tonight. For the people that purchased that ritual, um, I will send you guys a private video of the burn. And some things that I see as well. And um, I will be doing that on tonight. So... The, I've been really, really, really reading up on different goddesses. I'm in, uh, how can I say it? I'm an eclectic type of spirit. I'm a eclectic, solitary type of witch where I like to work alone, but I, in my own workings, but I love to tutor people in order to find them their higher selves and just fix and heal. I, I'm, I'm a healer. And I attach to the un, injustice that's what's going on in this world with the feminine energy right now. The injustice of it all. All right? Now, some people can, don't believe in abortion. Some people believe that their bodies are their own and they can do as they will and it's so funny how people sitting in the sea most of the time male energies that cannot have children that cannot carry babies that cannot ever have a child dictate what i'm going to do with my body also another thing is using Christian concepts in order to control me. I, I don't I don't walk that walk. So it's not fair to me that you're sitting in a seat. Whatever you believe, that's fine. But I don't walk that walk. So it should not be applied to me if it's not apl applicable to me. So I'm just focusing now on different goddesses from Norse to Orishas to Voodoo Queens to Saints to Witch Queens everything to do with the fem feminine energy 
you can pull in their ashe. You can ask them for help. You can request some help. You can uh, connect with them ancestrally. And that's what I'm going to focus on doing videos for pertaining to that videos pertaining to how to set in a petition, how to honor them, how to feed them, how to place your altar, the, 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 what about them that will be good to fight this good fight. That's what I'm going to be doing often. Okay. It's a lot of, uh, baby blossoms in the craft that connect with different deities but you don't know what to do and i got you i personally personally in my walk have not really petitioned or asked for anything from any deity i'm usually one that does candle magic i'm usually the one that does spell jars honey jars uh, souring jars, um, everything like uh, spell bags. I do that type of work. Um, I do have an altar, a working altar. I do protection work. I have an altar for that. I have a prosperity altar, but I have never really done a, and I have ancestral altar, but I have never really done which I know how to do it because I read a lot and I take in a lot of information. Um, and I think now is the time that we petition these feminine goddesses, these deities for help to fight that overwhelming feeling that men control us. You're not going to fucking control me and my body. It's my birthright. It's so funny how God says we have free will but the state says you don't. So why are you trying to teach the way of the Bible if it's not a free will? It's free will if you want to carry a child or not. It's free will if you want to birth a child or not. That's a free will for a woman because only women can do that. Huh? Only, only feminine energies can do that. And while you're sitting on that seat, Men telling me what I can and cannot do with my body. What if we tell you that if you ejaculate in a woman, semen, sperm, cum, whatever you want to call it, that you'll go to jail? Hmm. Think about that. Or think about this. In the Bible, it also states that a woman... A woman, it does state this in that Bible, that a woman shall bear children and take care of the hearth at home. So if we're pregnant, why do we have to work? Because a man's supposed to sweat by his brow all the days of his life and take care of his home and his children. So if that's the case, sir, can we not work so we can carry and bear, bear the, all these kids? Let's make it right. Let's make it fair then. Because that's what the Bible says. That a man is supposed to sweat by his brow all the days of his life and work the lands. So women, if we got to carry these children that we don't have control over carrying, we're not supposed to work. Do you hear me? So if you want to play fair game, you want to play it for the, for the women, let's play that for the men. Did y'all know that? Don't. Let me go ahead and get into this, get into this um, message or this tutoring I got. Um, I do pull from my information from books that I've read. I pull it from the internet, books, different uh, spiritual um, practitioners, other people, so I'm giving you information from them and we're going to start off with the first one. And that is Annie Christmas, daughter of the Mississippi River. Annie Christmas. And that is A-N-N-I-E Christmas. Have you guys ever heard of that? Have you ever heard of that? Oh, my glasses, y'all. 
get the teacher, hunt. Let's talk about any Christmas. So, got some stuff downloading too, y'all. So, Annie Christmas is the daughter of the Mississippi River. She's the daughter of the Mississippi River. She admits energy, energy to those that, in her presence, who have done wrong and a feeling of safety and security to those she has come to assist. So this here, Petition at Annie Christmas, is a great one to petition for the feeling of you being done wrong. We've been done wrong as a feminine energy. Let me put my iPad down here, y'all. We have been done wrong. And we need to feel safe and secure because these men aren't doing it. Okay? She's the daughter of the Mississippi Delta. And she's born in the city of New Orleans stronger than any man and a hero to every woman any christmas any christmas was the original superhero before superheroes were a thing her stories inspired both enslaved and free african americans and pre-civil war louisiana now, people like to say that there are an infinite number of luau's. The religions of Haitian voodoo and New Orleans voodoo are fluid to some extent, right? And new elements are very often incorporated as necessary. Now, this is the case with the um, luau any Christmas. And with her, it's a circumstance of deep need, deep need for her. It's a deep need for that security and that safety in a God and goddess petitioning them for assistance or for a request for help. Now, her reputation preceded her along the Mississippi, Mississippi River Valley as a force to be reckoned with. She was stronger again than any man. And again, a hero to every feminine energy. She's a hero. She also had the reputation of being an annihilator of bullies, of bullies, big bullies in the capital trying to bully us. Now, just let her see a man pick on someone. And once she was done with him, he never acted that way again. Any Christmas, y'all. She even scared off big old Mike Fink from the docks of Lower Mississippi. If y'all ever heard of Mike Fink, she scared him off. Now, in the case of Any Christmas, in New Orleans, many believe she was an actual person. Now, there are many, many, many tales and stories telling of her legendary life. She was said to have been striking. She had dark skin, amber skin, standing over seven feet tall. She was a big lady. She was a big woman and weighing over 250 pounds. Annie Christmas was either a steamboat captain, they say, or a railroad, a railroad, I can't talk, a railroad worker. Depending on which story you are hearing, she's called the biggest woman in Louisiana and she had several sons as well. Now, her greatest strength was known throughout the world. Some versions of her story say she fell in love with a steamboat captain, while others say that um, Killboat Annie as she is also called, either never married or was a widow for most of her life. Um, Annie Christmas used to state, you got a bully on these few blasted acres of mud, you call a town. That's how she talked, right? Get him out of his old hole if he'll come out. 
I'll tear the hide off them and hang it up to dry in the morning. I'm a cross between a snapping turtle and a swamp gator. I was weaned on panther's milk and I eat grizzly bear claws for breakfast. Seeing your white liver champion down the river landing, I'll turn his bones into gopher dust. This is Annie Christmas. Y'all hear me? That's Annie Christmas. Do you hear me? Seeing they ass to her. So, even more than the defender of the underdog, which we are right now. Women, have, women, we've always been underdogs. Y'all know it. But we are silent killers. They always thought that men overshadowed women. And that's not the truth. This is going to stop. Annie was ahead of her time. She insisted on equality and treatment between genders. She took on occupations typically reserved for men. Sounds familiar? She resisted the social mores of the times like the usual placage arrangements popular during the early 19th centuries in, um, century in New Orleans, whereby white men arranged common law households with non-European women of African, Native American, as well as Creole descent. Now, any Christmas rejected such arrangements, viewing it as a male-dominated, racist, social institution. Instead, she ran away to the frontier of the Mississippi River to become a well-respected kill boatman. Now, scant information about Annie Christmas is available in the written record. Now, one description about her comes from a local informant from New Orleans named Eddie Sims, right? Who was interviewed by the Federal Writers Project. That's FWP. Look it up in the 1930s. Sims was a 54-year-old long longshoreman who had worked on the riverfront front for some 20-something years. He remembered Annie Christmas as a pie lady and a bucket woman who used to bring lunch to the longshoresmen on the riverfront. He confirmed that Annie Christmas was a black woman who had many sons who also worked on the riverfront. She was a bad woman, he stated, who used to fight um, with men specifically if they didn't pay her her money. Sometimes she would get in fights around the whiskey joints and whip everybody she saw. Now, as a folk heron, Annie Christmas has been treated as racially fluenced, fluid in the South. You could say she was uh, gender fluid as well, depending on who you talk to, she could be black, a former slave, or white with a small but carefully trimmed mustache. Sims, however, said that he didn't know anyone could say she was white when at the time, certainly no white women were on the riverfront. No white women did that. Of course not. Either way, all agree she could outwork a plantation mule. Annie Christmas is of African descent. At some point, she was adopted into New Orleans voodoo, voodoo's um, pantheon of spirits. Don't ask me when, we don't have a clue. The fact remains a magical mystery, but suffice it to say it was a long, long, very long time ago. Now, all pantheons have a specific special symbol, a day of the week, a feast day, and a life um, that domains over which they, uh, they influence, right? So, when an in individual 
is experiencing problems in a given area, they will call on the spirit or saint that governs the sphere of influence for assistance. To the end, Annie is petitioned for protection and defense, removing obstacles, empowering women, and destroying bullies. Her origin, origin story is full of mysteries. So let's talk about any Christmas a little bit more deep in detail. Y'all know I put my glasses on. I got my notes, honey. So it's easy to see why she is still called and talked about for today. She could beat up any man and she often served up some justice to local bullies and thugs. After each beat down, she was said to add a new pearl on her necklace, which was to believe to hold her power. She wore a pearl necklace, pearl, honoring, offer her a pearl. Now the most popular part of her story explains how she saved hundreds of people from drowning on the Mississippi River. It begins with a foolish caption leading a steamboat down the river in a um, raging storm. The um, steamboat captain made a wrong turn, leading them down the river, despite Andy trying to advise him how to navigate the difficulties. He didn't listen. So in the end, Annie, who rescues the people on the boat with her skill and her wit, she rescued all the people on the boat. This world of New Orleans voodoo today still honors Annie Christmas as one of the foremothers of the city. Because of her character, she is seen as a kind of female like a goon. I'm sorry, a female a goon, because a goon is male. Displaying masculine strength, but she is a feminine entity, a feminine divine that displays masculine strength and power despite her given gender. It is said that no one can tame any Christmas and no one can tame the Mississippi. You wonder why I'm talking about any Christmas for protection, for the bullies. Okay. So fix this more information on Miss Annie Christmas. So we know about the steamboat. We know how she is a seven foot tall lady weighing about 250 pounds. She's a black lady, strong, has many, many sons as well. She worked the docks along the Mississippi River as a um, flatbed unloader, just like the men folk did. She could walk a gangplank with a barrel of flour under each arm and one on her head to boot, right? She um, had no time for such foolishness. Foolishness. Annie will slap you across the face herself. Slap the shit out of you. <laughs> I swear to God. Y'all, these stories. She will slap the shit out of you. I love her. She is one that I'm going to be petitioning because I'm not, listen, I need her ashe. I'll slap the shit out of somebody too. I'm just poor to her. Seriously. Um, let's go. We're going to jump straight into some ways to, um, let's no, let's talk about her necklace. A symbol of Annie's power was her necklace made of pearls or beads. And it was said to be a record of all her heroic deeds. Every time she did something to empower, something heroic, she would add a bead to her necklace, a pearl bead. They say that she wore this necklace every day at work, at night, during play, as a constant reminder of all the men she'd slayed. Some say she wore every day, whether she was dressed as a man or as a woman, working on the docks, towing a keelboat, 
or balling the jack at a juke joint. Another version says its necklace made of yellow beads. Yet another story says it was a made of alligator's teeth. Still another says her necklace was made up of the eyes, noses, and ears she collected during her beatdown activities. But I like the pearl version better, right? So we're gonna honor her with pearls. When she died, they say her necklace was 30 feet long, a proper memento for her. It could have been longer, only some of the fights were so easy and it didn't feel it was honorable to commemorate them. They say she only recorded the white men she defeated. Because if she had also recorded black men, her necklace would have been way too long or she would have run out of pearls, honey. Okay. Now her death. Let's talk about any any Christmas's death. It's different var variations, of course. So um, we each like to add our own embellishments. Now Annie's bad assery and how she never met a man she couldn't lick. She dressed in her all finery. She was so impressed by this guy that she fell madly in love with. She poured on the charm, but it didn't work. The man was not interested in a romantic relationship with her. Annie took the rejection awfully hard. She became sullen and depressed. Right? They say she put on her red satin dress and put her three, three of her most beautiful peacock feathers in her hair. She spritzed herself with a uh, follow me boy perfume like she was going out on the town that she wrapped that 30 foot pearl necklace around her neck and she hung herself for love. But another legend recounts the story differently. Remember when Annie married the gambling man named Charlie? I didn't tell you guys about that, but she married a gambling man. His name was Charlie with whom she had 12 sons. The smallest son was seven feet tall before the age of six years old. He was a big one, huh? Well, one day, Charlie went to a gambling house and put his money on a red at roulette. The operator spun the wheel and the little ball bounced until it landed on red. Now, Charlie didn't bat an eye. And again, he placed his money on red and again, fortune was with him. They say Charlie kept playing the wheel until he amassed a hefty $16,000. That was a whole ton of money back then in Annie's days. Everyone kept telling Charlie he needed to stop, but Charlie kept his eye on the wheel and didn't say a word. He just sat there, kept playing, finding no response. Annie found herself, um, they took a closer look at Charlie. Still no word from Charlie. He just sat there staring at the wheel. But he was dead. At the roulette table. From a heart attack. Annie found herself a widow and $16,000 richer. Annie would spend the money and have the fanciest finest funeral ever for her husband Charlie but first she called her 12 sons and had a talking to them she put on a beautiful black satin dress put a put her 30 foot um long necklace on fixed her hair and her face and they say she shot herself dead now there's two different um ways that they say that she died we never know which one it was but that's what they say about Annie's death now, we're gonna talk about, right quick, ways to offerings for any Christmas. Now that we know who she is, and we know how powerful she was. Usually, offerings are brought to the riverside, or at least the water's edge, or you can do your, adorn your altars and shrines for any Christmas. Sometimes they are almost non-existent but maybe as time passes and changes, this too shall change. A lot of people, do; they don't erect altars for her. 
They go to the riverside or to the water. But we need to start, we need to petition her. I'm going I don't have water near me to do that, but I do have an altar. Some ways you can petition her or some offerings is black candles, dark rum, iron chains, pearls, river water, rue, sassafras, and little small boats. Any Christmas reminds us of our own inner strength and power. Use these workings to get in touch with your own strength and to find out how you can help others who may be subjected to unfair treatment, all women. You can um, do a any Christmas Grigory bag. Now this bag is carried with you at all times. It will help you, um, it will help bring you strength and victory over your enemies. So in this bag, you can add the iron fillings, one tablespoon of rue, one tablespoon of guinea pepper, and one pearl. Carry the bag for strength, courage, to bring in the ashe of any Christmas. Let's see. And this here... is ways to y'all y'all know i got my glasses on y'all be okay here but these are some ways of honoring any christmas any christmas was a powerhouse this lady was a strength she reminded me so much so much of a gun toting fool right back in the day when these big uh black ladies were walking the earth long time ago it just reminds me of a grandmother that didn't play no game any Christmas, y'all. Women, feminine energies, let's petition her for help. I'm going to come back with a couple of more videos of different deities or different uh, witch queen, queens, hoodoo saints, voodoo queens, orishas, goddesses, everything you can name in order to petition. If it resonates with you, pull it. Go read up on her. Read a little bit more, all right? Because there's a lot of information out about her. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and support my channel. It will be greatly appreciated. My link's in the bio to my store. Click on the link. Go support. Buy something. It is greatly appreciated. And guys, it's always many, many blessings of abundance. Bye, y'all.